Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iwineradio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iWineRadio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, go to iWineRadio.com and contact us and we'll go from there. Hello, my name is Scott Garris. I'm the winemaker at Old York Cellars in Ringo's, New Jersey, and I invite you to come out and enjoy the tasting room that we have or visit our website at oldyorkcellars.com. Thank you. I had received an email in December about Old York Cellars in Ringo's, New Jersey, Somebody had, had just moved from one winery to another winery. And my gosh, uh, what I really picked up on was the fact that in January, they were, re- or I think it was actually the tail end of December, they were in the process of releasing their very first vintage of sparkling wine, a Blanc de Blanc from 100% Chardonnay, small batch production and jo- and they make many other wines as well but i was particularly interested in the sparkling wine joining us today on wine and dine is scott garris who's the winemaker and he's been with uh, you've been with uh old town ta- old york sellers for for several years as i understand right scott yes correct uh the fall of 2008 wow now, i i know i've interviewed at least one other person in Ringo's New Jersey area and and I did, I'm sorry I'm not prepared to mention that name but w- what kind of appellation what's the name of the appellation where you're at in New Jersey We're sort of along the Sourland Mountain Range uh it's sort of between Flemington and Princeton area Okay how how were you affected by the hurricane that did so much damage on the coast there uh, we had a lot of our harvest already in when the hurricane came through. Uh, okay. We lost a couple poles, a few trees, but it didn't affect uh, too much with the crop load. Uh, we actually had our tanks were already going, so we were at, without electric for eight days, which oh. was both sore thumb. Oh, yes. Was it cool enough to help you in that regard or, or not? Yes, that's where we were lucky. Yeah. It was uh, in the temperatures between 45 and 65 degrees, so we were quite lucky with the temperatures that we didn't have to worry about uh, oh, the heat. Yeah, really. Yeah, uh, no thank you, Mother Nature, but thank you, Mother Nature, in that regard. Yes. So I see that you have several different uh, varietal reds that you produce, whites and blends, including a fruit wine. But would you mind, please, starting by talking to us about this new baby, your sparkling wine? Ah, uh, yes. The new sparkling wine is our Blanc de Blanc. It is uh, done method champenois, where I do all the riddling in the bottles. It's a small batch of production at a time, where I do about uh, six to seven cases uh, at once uh, with a riddling rack, and then uh, when we disgorge with a dry ice. And an uh, alcohol solution. Okay, I want to ask you some technical questions here. How many months entourage or, or you know, yeast? It spends roughly five to six months. Okay. Um, in the riddling rack, and then uh, once it goes into uh, settling, it then goes into that for about another three months. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. So all together, it's um, uh, the better part of a year. Almost. Yes, no, just short of it, yes. Okay. Now, were you making sparkling wine someplace else, or where did you learn how to make spark- method champenois sparkling wine, and why now? 
It was sort of a pro- program that we wanted to do earlier, but with all our other wines, we wanted to get all our other wines established. And, and as you can see, our wine list uh, won several awards with everything that we've had. So then that's when I wanted to venture into the sparkling wine and do it actually the traditional style. Um, did, so it's did, been, a, been a project of mine for a while. I have done it at other vineyards that I have worked at. Okay. So I sort of brought that over to here, and, and I had a Chardonnay that I really enjoyed. It was a stilled wine Chardonnay that I had, and I really enjoyed it in the bottle, so that's what I, I wanted to use it for the champagne. Okay, and no oak no oak on this. It's, 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 no, it's all fermented in the bottle, no aging of oak or anything like that. Okay, and let me see. Uh, do you, is it available in seven fifties and magnums, or just seven fifties? Just the seven fifties. It's available in traditional champagne style bottle. And what kind of? Pr- I didn't see a price listed on the website. I was looking yesterday. Do you know what the winery is charging for it? Uh, yes, we're doing thirty dollars a bottle. Okay, and I, I know that there are a lot of events that are going on. At at uh, Old York Cellars, do you all, at the winery? Do they also host like weddings and that sort of thing? Uh, we don't do weddings, uh, but we do other uh, chef events, things that are related around the vineyard and around the winery and our production and stuff. So we do chef events where we have a chef come in. He does a demonstration where we do a food pairing, and the chef will talk about his entree and how he designed it, what he does in the restaurant, and then I talk about how I prepare the wine and I choose the correct wine with each course. And then I talk about the wine and go into description about that. Oh, that's a lot of fun. And yeah. I would imagine you have a loyal following for that. Yeah, pretty much everybody that signs up to the first one definitely signs up for the next ones because they are very, um, they're fun, they're educational, and uh, plus it's a, everybody gets together, people get to find new friends. Did you, this sparkling wine, the Blanc de Blanc was released, what, in the, like the second or third week in December? The Friday before Christmas it was. And how how did it, did people, you know, buy that all up that you had riddled and, and bottled already? I have a couple cases that are left. Wow, and and when that, when those couple cases are gone, there's no more till next year? I probably will not have any until what I have in the racks now. My next release will probably be in... May. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm so glad that we're uh, hearing about this at the very beginning. And do you, you must be particularly fond of sparkling wines to go, you know, to have this in your in your thoughts that you wanted to do this for sem- several years. Yes, it's definitely a labor of love, that's for sure. For the time consuming, for, you know, starting off with distilled wine and then doing the second fermentation in the bottle, doing a traditional while. And then I, you know, every morning when I come in with my cup of coffee, I do all the riddling. <laughs> Your wrists are stronger for that? Yes. <laughs> so, so, Scott, let me ask you, with, um, with uh, the, I want to focus next on the whites. You make a dry Riesling, a Pinot Gris, a Vidal Blanc, and a Chardonnay. Is, our, our, is a Pinot Gris and Vidal Blanc and Chardonnay basically dry also? They are on the dry side as well, but with uh, each different vintage, I use a different type of yeast with it. So you're going to get different characteristics with each type of wine. Okay. So you're going to get more, like with the Chardonnay, you're going to get that more buttery characteristic with it, with, a, with, a, the, with the yeast that I use for that. And okay. then like the Pinot Gris and the Riesling, you're going to get more of that grapefruit characteristics with it and a little bit more acidity because of the yeast that I use with those. I forgot to ask you on the sparkling wine, did you finish that in a brute style? It's uh, done in, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, moving on to reds, I want to mention you make a Malbec. You make a proprietary blend called Stagecoach Red, a Syrah, a Vintner's Blend, and a Cabernet Sauvignon. Some people might be surprised to hear that all of this is available to you in New Jersey how, what percentage of your grapes are estate grown, or do you have contracts with people? I do have contracts with uh, other people that are in the area. Um, I do bring in a little bit from upstate New York and stuff, just because I don't uh, grow enough of certain things here on the premises. But I do have everything here planted. Upstate New York was that be for the riesling? Uh, that would be yes, for the yeah. riesling, the pinot. Uh, and is the Chardonnay for the Blanc de Blanc your, your Chardonnay or from uh, from New Jersey? Yes, it is. 
Oh, that's great. Um, how does the Vidal Blanc go with raw oysters? It goes very well with that, and also scallops in a, like a, um, in a garlic in a garlic and herb sauce. Mm. It's very good with that. Uh, that's what I like about the Vidal. It complements almost anything that you want to put it up against. Is it's sort of like a Sauvignon Blanc in style. Oh, oh, that's so good that you said that. Good, because a lot of people, if they're not right in that area where Vidal is grown, they have no clue what it you know what it's similar to yeah because nobody really recognizes the name but yeah if you, you mentioned that it comes off like a sauvignon blanc everybody's familiar with that yeah. that's uh, sort of how it's uh, flavored as it has a little bit more lemon to it than grassy characteristics mm. okay you make a fruit wine blackberry and peach and, mm, and I'm, blackberry is delicious and i'm curious do you use local blackberries local peaches are they fresh or use frozen or concentrate or how does that work um i get the the juice i, get, I bring it down from new york and uh okay. that's uh is the the orchards that are up there um as i don't have anything in this area here I, I have a few blackberry plants planted but not enough for what we produce okay so that it sounds like that's a very popular wine for you yes yes it is good and the the blush Mm-hmm. Is that like uh, a, a blend of like Cabernet Syrah, that sort of thing, Malbec? It's a blend of uh, Cayuga White, which is a French American hybrid, and a uh, Colibel. I use a Colibel, which is a, another red uh, French American hybrid. Which, uh, when you pick it, it actually the grapes are almost black. Wow! So I use about ten percent of that, and uh, that what gives me my my blush color. It's almost uh, like fiery. Oh wow! Oh, I bet you, that was real popular during the holiday season. Yeah, that was a good, and also during the summertime, you know, picnics, barbecues, it's great with that. You also put out a ruby port, a white port, a sweet Riesling, and what you call Ravat 51. These are all dessert wines. Uh, yes, yeah, the, uh, the ports uh, sort of speak for themselves. I, I came up with a recipe for the white port several years ago. And we have it in a unique tr- blue triangle bottle, which is a 500 ml bottle. Oh wow! And everybody just falls in love with the bottle because it's just so unique. I don't. Uh, you might not be able to answer me on this, and I don't want to go in that much depth. But I would imagine that if people want to be ordering wine from you, when there's a will, there's a way. And, yes. And there are um, probably some kind of there are shipment restrictions of where you can ship outside of uh, New Jersey, but. If someone listening wants to order wine from you, if they connect, you know, to the winery, can you guys somehow help them to ship wine yes. to them? Yes, uh, we can do it through uh, oldrickcellars.com, our website. Uh, you can order through there. Okay. Uh, but right now we are shipping in the state of New Jersey, and eventually we are working on, you know, the, the ways to ship out of state. Okay. So we just have to go through all the channels first. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And, of course, if somebody has friends that live in New Jersey or you're traveling up that way, you can... Uh, you, it, it, uh, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. Well, that's the nice thing about New Jersey. I mean, it's 130 miles long and 70 miles wide. So, you know, within an hour or two, you can be at almost any place in the state. Wow. Oh, that sounds very reasonable. And not that far, maybe, from New York City, even. Yeah, and we have plenty of bed and breakfasts in the area and antique shops and stuff in the area. So it makes a nice day trip to come out. Thank you so very much, Scott Garris, for joining us today from Old York Cellars. You're welcome. Now, you can listen to Wine and Dine Radio while shopping at the grocery store or your neighborhood wine merchant. Wine and Dine Radio can be heard using your wireless internet on your cell phone. You're listening to iWine Radio. iWine Radio is a production of Food Tastes Better with Wine on the web at iWineRadio.com. Hey guys, I thank you for listening to iWine Radio, and we are still the only wine channel on iTunes Radio. If you go look under iTunes Radio icon and scroll down to News and Talk Directory, and it's listed alphabetically, click on that and the stream comes up immediately. iWineRadio.com where you can find links to individual guests. And if anyone's interested in advertising or becoming an underwriter or sponsor, please contact us at iwineradio.com. We really, really appreciate your support. The more support we get, the more conversations I can have with fascinating people around the world, including you. If you have a story to tell that you'd like to share on iWine Radio, 
go to iwineradio.com and contact us and we'll go from there.